It, the sound of having that engine sitting in a car that you've, you know, um, converted over and that. It, and then, so I'll take all these lines out again. Once this is done, then I'm pretty much in a position uh, to start it up. So not gonna, there's not gonna be mo no movie magic here. This is literally the first fire up, so. So this for me is the exciting part of the build, which is the first fire up. Now I remember when I did the uh, the 45, just yeah, the the sound of having that engine sitting in a car that you've you know um, converted over and that it was it was a pretty cool feeling. So there's there's been a bit of a build up to this one. Um, it probably probably hasn't gone in as as probably quick as I thought. It was quick as I'd liked. Uh, but we're getting close. So I've still got a list of things to do. We, I've still got to finish off fuel lines. We've got to plug a whole heap of different connectors and everything in to make sure that everything's all there. Uh, what else is there? Oh, I've got to modify the fuel tank. So if you remember in a previous video, the, the fuel filler uh, came out the, I guess, the backside of it. And then I was thinking about how I was going to run the hose out to the filler neck. Well, in the end, uh, and thanks to you guys and the comments that you've left in that video, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blank off that original um, filler hole and I'm going to drill and weld in a new filler hole that's on the corner so it makes that filler neck um, quick. The reason I want to do that now before I fire it up is because I then don't have to worry about any fuel fumes or anything like that um, in the tank. I can do it while the tank is still new and there's never been any fuel in it. So I'll do it now before I fire it up, and then I won't have any issues with you know, blowing the shed up and that. Uh, so yeah, aside from that, it's um, fuel line, as I said, fuel lines, uh, plugging everything in, and then just doing that. I've also got to run some fuel pump wiring and and whatnot. But um, aside from that, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much in a position ready to go. So let's go and have a look at what I've what I've done so far and what I've still got to do, and then. Um, We'll keep going on with the with the build log. All right, so starting in the engine bay, um, if you remember, I talked about putting in because um, I'm running the full. VR Commodore wiring loom. So I'm not making any adapter looms or anything like that. I've got the full wiring loom. So I'm running uh, all the original fuses and the original um, relays and everything like that. So I've mounted that nicely there. Um, and then, yeah, this is obviously the main fusible links and whatnot. Um, so that's all good. And I've made a cover up. So this cover here just covers up all the wiring connectors and everything like that. And it's also where I've got two terminals. So the positive terminal, negative terminal which those two then run underneath the car, and I'll show you underneath the car. So those two run underneath the car and pop out um, in the battery that I've mounted in the back here. Um, yeah, so um, that's, that's sitting in a battery box, which will be sitting underneath the floor. So that's all good. I've still got um, you know, bits and pieces of wiring and that to plug in. Um, the ignition switch is all hooked up and, and I've got all the, all the fuses and everything like that. That's all ready to go. Body control modules in there. Um, so, yeah, everything like that's all all done. So it's literally just finishing off the fuel line. So I've got to pull these fuel lines out, um, put a proper uh, end on those so I can run um, new hoses to the fuel rail and to the manifold. Uh, and then, yeah, modify the um, fuel tank. So I don't know if I've actually done this in a video yet, but yeah, this is, I've got all the wiring um, running up underneath the guard there. Um, so that'll all be basically hidden. Um, all that wiring will be basically hidden, um, which basically means that in the engine bay, it can be sort of fairly clean um, and not really show any wires or anything like that. So yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty good. All right, so looking under here, um, I, so this this brace here that goes um, it's for the cross member for the for the gearbox and everything like that um, standard it was all bashed in and that so what I've done is I've made up some uh, three mil plate um, and I've just tacked it in there for the moment I'll weld it fully when it's back on the rotisserie um, but yeah that's just to give that that bit of strength 
um, back into it as well. So I've tied that back to the back to the chassis rail. And then I've also put in a piece of uh, 75 by 25 um, plate or sorry bar that runs all the way back to to the front or to the rear spring hanger. So the front the front rear spring hanger. Um, so yeah, I know rod shops and that they do a kit for these. I think it's a bolt-in kit. Um, but I actually just wanted to have that little bit of extra strength at the front, um, and it just ties that back to the, back to that as well. But it serves the dual purpose of being able for me to run my fuel lines and my battery cables um, along and keep them up and off the ground, um, obviously. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've done here. And then um, this is what I've still got to finish off now, which is um, I've got a fuel filter with a fuel filter bracket will go in there. So I've just got to finish those off there. And then I've got some um, braided line which will go over the top of the diff into where the fuel tank is. So just got to finish that off. Um, that's obviously where the battery cables go up and then they'll go into the battery box that's inside. Um, so that's all hidden away nicely. And then on this side, um, done the same thing again. Just um, made out that plate, tacked that in there. And then I've run that all the way to the back again as well. And on this side, I'll run brake lines. And then I've also got the breather for the um, charcoal canister in that as well, which has got to go to the fuel filler neck. So I'll run them. I'll run those two on that side, but I don't have to do that before the first fire up. I can do that later on. Um, but yeah, what I'm up to now is I'll just finish off those fuel lines there. And then, so I'll take all these lines out again. Um, put a new um, fitting or new fittings at the end, that end as well, at the engine side. Uh, and then we've got to modify the fuel tank and then um, she should be ready to start up. All right, so if you remember last time uh, when I fitted the fuel tank, um, I had the issue where the, the filler neck is at the back here. So I was wondering how I was actually going to do like a, a real tight 90 degree angle and then um, bring it across the, the filler neck over here. Well, there's been people on like commenting on YouTube, so thanks for that. Um, and also commenting on the, um, on the Facebook group where I should just blank that off and then just cut a new hole here and put the filler neck just straight in there. Um, so I'm... I didn't want to cut up a brand new tank um, and you know weld a piece in, but I think it is going to be my best option. So um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So that's what I'm about to do now. And then once once this is done, then I'm pretty much in a position uh, to start it up. So let's let's crack into this today. And so yeah, my plan is <clears throat> I'm going to uh, just measure up this. I'm going to cut a hole. I'm going to measure the profile of that curve and I'm just going to weld basically it to the side of the, the tank there. Uh, and then I've got to put a cap over this one. So whether I chop a little bit more of it off and then push it down or just put a cap straight over the top. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's my plan. I've got is because this is a curve and this is a straight obviously a 50 mil hole so I use the 50 mil hole saw creates a different 50 mil hole because it's 50 mil around so um, yeah if I went in maybe like that I could get it fairly close all right but because I'm going fairly flat in like that it's causing me to have to think about how to get that in there. Now, the other alternative is I take you know, a piece of that out so that that sits basically flush with that, which I can do, but I don't, still don't think that's gonna 
solve most of my issue. And I don't want to take any more out of the top here because I think once that clears that and gets in there, then I've got a massive hole to fill. So I'm just thinking. job done but that was an absolute pain in the ass the cap for the filler that's fine that's come out all right but yeah just i just had all sorts of issues um obviously different material thicknesses so this um this tube is i think it's two mil more uh, yeah something like that and obviously the um the fuel tanks only made out of thin gauge stuff so as soon as i put the tig welder on it bang it just blew straight through so i end up having to mig um had to mig weld this on on and which means i was able to fill in the gap at the top there anyway so that's fine um so i mean as you can see like it's it's not yeah not the best but <laughs> it got there in the end um some of it's okay and then the cap for the top so i was able to tig weld that one on so at least that one's come up nice um so yeah that's um that's done now so i'll go and um i'll go and put it in the car and uh start hooking stuff up all right we're getting closer got the uh fuel filter in now so i end up instead of like because you can buy you know like the proper race ones and everything like that but i just want to keep things that i can just buy parts off the shelf and that so i've just gone like a generic ryko um, inline filter and then that way I can just go and replace it whenever I want um, bought a bracket I'll obviously I have to cut a little bit of the floor out and redo that because there was a bracket there that, um, originally so um, I've just tech screwed that in for the moment but yeah that's that's the bracket where that's going to fit there so that's that's quite nice um, and then yeah I've got the the dash lines up and over now and then they're they're hooked up into the um, into the fuel pump which is in the um, fuel tank now. So the last thing I've got to do is I've just got to do some fuel pump wiring. Um, I've already put probably 10 litres of fuel in it. So that's looking good. Um, fuel pump wiring, check the fluids, and then I reckon we're pretty much right. So here we go. Last check time. Battery cables in, batteries connected, have 12 volt, have an earth, have body earths. Uh, all the relays are in, all the fuses are in, all the fusible links are in. All the wires are plugged in, in the engine bay. Um, I'm not running coolant this time because I'm just literally just going to start it up to see if it all engages and everything like that and then switch it off so I'm not going to run coolant um, but I've put the radiator lines on there anyway um, just in case you know because there's obviously going to be a bit of coolant left in the engine so that can just pump its way into the radiator what's going to be interesting is the there's a uh, there's a fitting on the back of the intake manifold uh, for the heater lines and it broke off because it's plastic. Don't know why. Um, so I've blo I've blocked it off, but I'm I'm gonna guess that there's gonna be water pissing out of it. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Fuel lines are on. Uh, intakes on. There's no wires near the exhaust manifolds. Uh, I think everything in the engine bay should be right. I move into here and. I've plugged in the dash, I've plugged in the ignition switch, I have taped off all of the loose connections that are positives and stuff like that, so like speakers are just left to like that. Um, managed to pull out the fuel pump wiring out of the Commodore, so uh, just literally plugged that up and terminated that, so that, that all should run now. Plugged in the shifter, it's got fuel, yeah. 
I think that's everything. So hang with me because I'm literally going to, I'm not going to, there's not going to be mo no movie magic here. This is literally first fire up. So come with me on the journey. Uh, if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, here we go. That's me just doing that. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> it lives! <laughs> right, let's just go see. Oh yeah, that's good. A few leaks. Yeah. As I said, all I wanted to do is just make sure that it fired and it fired. And guess what? I don't even have any engine lights on the dash either. So, pretty happy. Should we go a bit longer? I think we should. Sounds funny without an exhaust on it, without a muffler on it, but how good. I am stoked with that. So, in summary, the biggest thing that I was, or the thing that I was probably least worried about was uh, the wiring side. So, I, because I've able, or because I took out the entire wiring loom out of the Commodore, I just basically plugged this all in. So, in theory, it shouldn't it shouldn't have had an issue or anything like that. Uh, so that's why it pretty much started up first go. Um, so that was good. The only thing I was worried about was you know a bit of how the fuels yeah you know, how the fuel lines go because I made up new fuel lines and everything like that. But that all seemed to to work nicely. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked. That's uh, that's a big win. That's a big milestone. It means that everything works. It means it's sitting in there and it's all working. So uh, there's no, the check engine light's not even on, on the dash. So that means that it's not, um, hasn't thrown a code or anything like that. So yeah, happy days. I guess where to from here? Um, still obviously got a, a long way to go and a lot to do, but um, yeah, um, that's a, it's always a milestone day is first fire up. So I'm glad that that's, uh, that's been passed now, so that's what uh, the 4th of May, so may the 4th be with you. Um, yeah, cool. On to the next bit.